What's going on, Foot Clan? We are back in the divisional breakdowns today, looking at the competitive AFC East, all of the implications for Aaron Rodgers' health, and a whole lot more. Don't miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Saturday episode. Jason Moore. We get crazy on the weekend, boys. So <laughs> Do we? What? Well, I do. I'm just saying. What do you have planned? Well, you listen to the episode, find out. We get crazy on the weekend with our AFC East takes. That's right. That's right. No holds barred today. Okay. Well, I'll be curious to hear who you predict to win the division. So you're, you're not curious who I predict to lose and finish last in the division? I'm not as curious about that. No. I. You're <laughs> locked in for third, guys. Oh, you want to find out who well, we yeah, have? Jason's yeah. Jason's third place pick. We I, I had Kyle do the math for last year. One point for correct prediction mm -hmm. in each division. I didn't know what the results were going to be, but I kind of, you know, you kind of know. I ended up winning last year's competition, so I have something to repeat. You did. Well, it, I... It's tough. It's tough to uh, to nail these down because there's a there's a Houston every year. Yeah, and, and it, it won't be the Patriots, but um, <laughs> I do think that whoever is number one in this division, I, I don't know your guys' rankings here, but that it's very interesting, a very tight division. We like to keep things competitive. And the truth is, on this show, when we do these divisional breakdowns, it's like I don't hear from people on Twitter about, oh, cool, you picked my team to win the division. I just hear from the fans of the team that has to end up at the bottom and how dumb we are. I think you only hear that when it's a top-to-bottom difficult division. right? Like, like we didn't hear it with Tennessee. No, that's fair. You know, I heard it about Cincinnati. We're not because gonna, the, we're not going to hear it with the Patriots. So we're talking AFC East today. I'd like you to believe in the back of your mind that I might pick them to win the division. <laughs> right. I just want you to okay. think that. Uh, um, last right. year, Jason and I were apparently perfect in this division on the Buffalo, Miami, New York, New England order. So we'll see if that ends up being. You perfectly projected the demise of Aaron Rodgers then. Yeah, Jason and I had some inside <laughs> yeah. information. Well, I, I was, I was a little sad. If you, if you rewind the tape, I, I was devastated you, by the oh, injury. Oh, I know why. Yeah, yeah, because I, I believed Aaron Rodgers was already done. Like from his final season in Green Bay. Yeah, you were predicting a, a subpar year, and now you didn't get to see it. Right. Well, I mean, it was a pretty bad year. <laughs> so. Yeah, but a different kind of <laughs> yes. subpar. Yes. Um, you wanted a selfish victory lap. Yeah, and I'm not going to victory lap on an injury. So um, you're a man of principle. Yeah. Now it's funny because now I want to root for him just to come back, like to to you know so come back wait, from the wait. injury. I don't think it's going to happen. But like now that he he had the devastating wait, year, he's an underdog now. So you're on yes. his side. Yeah. Well, I'm, I am betting against the man, but I'm rooting for him. You could do that. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, but then you're like rooting against yourself to to lose. That's tough. That's, well, I mean, we're going to talk about it. How does one do that? <laughs> I root for him to lose every day. A lot of therapy, Mike. <laughs> uh, UltimateDraftKid.com. Go check it out. Draft Analyzer live right now. And uh, you can jump in there. Check out all of our tiered rankings and a ton of tools and resources. Get your team graded. Import your mock drafts. See how you did. This is the time of year as well. Like, obviously, we've got our tiered rankings there. That's how you want to draft is from tiers. But this is the time of year where you, you, you know, your draft probably isn't tomorrow. And so you can watch all the player profile videos. It's like getting, you know, 100 more hours of, of this show just talking about every single player. It's a great way to prep. All right, quick question of the day before we jump into the AFC East Divisional Breakdown. I think it's a fun one. Uh, as of right now, looking at where the landscape is in fantasy and where players are going, what's the who's the player you're most scared to take? Who's, who's the player you're most scared you to draft? To yeah, Mike, go ahead. Uh, I will throw out Drake London because he, uh, a a great philosopher, says all the time he was drafted to be great. I know that mm -hmm. guy. And 
we have seen like it hasn't been a been nothing from Drake London. Some guys at this point, like, I mean, look, Jamison Williams, we've really seen nothing. He's not Brashad Perryman, right? Yeah, it's we have we've seen a handful of games where he really takes over. He has a huge performance. He's kind of like a reason that the offense succeeds and then they win the game. But we have also seen lots and lots of failure. Like he did not, he barely surpassed 900 yards, which he, he did miss a game, but counting stats, he was barely over 900 yards. Meanwhile, Adam Thielen, Chris Godwin, DeAndre Hopkins, they all managed to surpass a thousand yards and they were also dealing with really, really bad quarterback play. So the fact that we haven't seen it, and now it's it's in the you're you're giving a second round pick to get Drake London, which he's like I I think he's good and but you're betting on Kirk Cousins returning with the Achilles. There's so much up in the air, and it's such an expensive pick for a guy where you feel like you haven't seen enough. Like to me, Garrett Wilson. I get, well, yes, we're going to talk about the Jets, but it's like I've seen enough from Garrett Wilson to go that's that's a dude. Drake London, I'm like, I I think it's interesting. I think so. But so you're not necessarily willing to give him the free pass some fantasy players are giving him on quarterback play. It reminds me of how we thought of DJ Moore for a little while and how we thought of Terry McLaurin for a little while where, I mean, th those are two really, really good players that we had seen in little flashes. Right. And, and for, But everybody wanted to elevate them and draft in, in the draft ADP. And like for Terry, like DJ Moore, it, it finally happened. DJ or Terry McLaurin, we're still waiting for it to happen and like that's the path that drake london is on right now jason who are you most afraid to draft mine is wild i mean this this should be like a wild card type of player it's crazy on the weekend I, I yeah i told you every single year there seems like there is a player where you go you, you we should have seen this coming we should have seen how great it was going to be it was clear it was obvious a couple years ago we were just talking about like it was it was when Stafford came, and you have Stafford and McVeigh and Cooper Cup together, and you're like, they, their ADPs were really low, and it was like, after every time we do a mock draft or something, it'd be like, you, you know, this might just work. You know, this is just gonna work because you got McVeigh, and so there's a player out there that it's just like, when he has a monster, unbelievable season, and is a top three running back, you can look out there and go, of course, we should have seen this coming. I, I'm. I'm imagining chuckles? I'm imagining that you'd make a very complicated, robust argument and never tell the audience the name. <laughs> and we move on. I hope so. And they just sit there going, Did he say it? Because the Who other was it? because Who was the it? other side of the argument is at the end of the year, there's always like those players where it's like, We knew we knew you know, Alexander Madison. It was like, you know that's not gonna work. It's the You take bet it, I take did. It easy. You bet I knew <laughs> it, it wasn't easy. gonna work. It's just like it's like uh, you know, it like Zamir White this year. It's like you can bet on them, but it's not going to work. You know, it, it just it never works, those type of players. And this is – I have the same fears. I still haven't said it, but I have the same exact fears of the same guy where it's like, clearly this isn't going to work. And also, obviously, it's going to be great. It's Devon A. Chan. Yeah. It's the itty-bitty running back who dominated NFL defenders last year. If you had – I had him on a bunch of rosters. Every time he touches the ball – Yep. was like the defense can't handle this guy. They can't catch up with him. If if he has any kind of crease, he is gone. He's in the perfect scheme fit. And you have to spin for him in drafts, so it, it, it stands I'm, the reason you'd be afraid I'm to terrified. waste the pick. I'm terrified. So he's going right now as the running back eight. Oh, my gosh. Uh, which <laughs> oh, I, w I want eight. So you're ready to spin? And, and, but hold on. I just want to give you – so top ten. The, the top ten running backs, this was the average of – Opportunities it took that oh, got these guys in the top it. 10. Oh, let's hear it. No. 240 attempts okay. and 66 targets. That was the average? That's the average of, top the, 10? of the top 10. Now, of mm. course, look, I mean, you got Christian McCaffrey taking that thing to the limit, but but it's an average of the top 10, and he's being drafted as that. 306 opportunities. And Devon Achan is not the guy who needs 300 opportunities, obviously, because he, like, where did he, he was in. I was about to see his per finished, game average of he opportunities. He finished t top 24 last year with 100 attempts for, for 800 yards and 37 targets. So, what, a rough, about 140 opportunities? Yeah, if, if you look when he 12. came. 12.7 per game in the games he played. 
did you take out the two games where he was like 5%? No, Kyle, I didn't. Kyle said 15.1 opportunities in nine full games. Oh, there you go. So it's just, it will. I, I want will to stay hold, healthy, will and he, then that's 250. Right. Will he get all of those opportunities? Where, where Raheem Mostert's great, at least it was last year. Will his body hold up to those opportunities? He, he does not need those opportunities. If he gets 250 opportunities, which was kind of what he was pacing yeah. as a rookie, yeah. he will absolutely return. It's will he stay healthy? And the thing is, is I want A-Chan on my roster. Like, I'm in. I'm willing to pull the trigger. But I really want him as my second running back. And he's not. He's the RB8. You can't do it. So you've got to rely on a guy that is so dicey as your first running back off the board, it just well, feels fragile. There there was a time. Oh, that's because it is, Jason. There was a time that Austin Eckler felt that way. Okay. Yeah. To give you the like, you know, should be obvious but wasn't obvious. And it's players that at the running back position don't fill the prototypical mental image of what you have in a workhorse back. And A-Chan is that guy. He's small, yes. But when you go and watch the film, I went back and watched a bunch of highlights from Devon Achan. He bounces off a of guy's great balance. He doesn't. He goes between the tackles. Um, it's not like he goes down on first contact. Like there are attributes to the player, regardless of the size, that make you think it. I mean, I could see uh, your yeah, face. I You're mean, like, I'm back in. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know if I'm in or out. I am just scared. So you'll be looking for him to drop. You'll you you'll want. So take advantage if other people are scared too. Yeah, I need to scare people off so that I can have them. <laughs> oh man, because you love him. I do, I do. But you love Mostert too. I know you've talked about that this off season at the value. You love Raheem Mostert. Yeah, I mean the last year's running back too going in like what is it the eighth round Seventh, or something? Eighth round, yeah. Seems a little like the pendulum swung too far. I'll take the low hanging fruit. That is almost an inverse of HN to me. HN hyper efficient, been banged up. Lower opportunities. Hy hypo? <laughs> hyper. Hyper. No, I'm saying what's the, the opposite, though. Oh, I see what you're saying. This is a oh, thyroid yeah, be, joke. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think it is. I think it's a hypo, uh, hypo efficient. It, um, was, it was just, you know. It was just a passing comment. Shouldn't be analyzed. Just, just a little prefix joke. <laughs> Come on. That's the good stuff. That is the good that's stuff. why they listen. Thank you. Did um, I at least get it right? Josh uh, Jacobs. Don't check. Okay. No, I, will, I, I will answer. Yes, you did. I knew it. <laughs> With I Josh think Jacobs, inefficient is the word you're looking for. No. Uh, please be quiet. <laughs> Hypo, Hypo efficient. We All are right. trying to analyze these he players. Was a efficient. <laughs> Josh Jacobs should work, can work. Great team, big money, feels scary because what you saw over the year last year was inefficiency. Forty-seven percent of the time over ten and a half points, which is our metric for consistency. For a running back, that's sub 50%, obviously not what you want if you're spinning a high pick. Ended with an injury, 3.5 a carry. Didn't look like the player that led the AFC in rushing the year before. So that, that, but, that's what defines a scary pick to me is you but, go into the season not in love with last year's film, but in love with all the externals. I'm saying at least when he went down, his backup, who had not really started any games, came in and looked terrible. Not true. That yeah. is – Strong ending for Zamir White. <laughs> um, and, and there's some, you know, he was late to camp. Fat Thor. Fat Thor. Uh, I don't know if that was everything. It was a tough season. For the quarterback position, they rotated through. The fact that, like, Fat Thor was just. So he was hypo-efficient. Fat Thor was such a throwaway joke. that just Yeah, it shouldn't have worked, no, man. It I was so mad at it, too, because <laughs> I had Josh Jacobs. And I was like, "Stop it!" Like, yeah, stop the fat. Thor I was like, thing. He, "He just negotiated a contract. He's not yeah. fat. He's not gonna be slow." And then I dressed up as Josh Jacobs for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, in a fat kept, Thor it, costume. It kept on. It kept on. So, look, I know you agree that Josh Jacobs is kind oh, of a terrifying pick. Yeah, he is. I, you know, there's a world like he's already done it. He could be a top three running back. Yes, he could get the kind of work on it. And what do we want? We want a team that's going to win ball games, an yep. offense that we like, a quarterback that we like. He's got all those. He's got AJ Dillon behind him. We love that. Yeah. yeah, well, no. He's got I mean, Marshawn Lloyd Marshall behind Lloyd, yeah. him. Fair. We'll see if Dylan makes the team. Oh, how's that feel? How'd that sentence feel? Hey, feels bad. What could, what could, <laughs> what could have been? Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll get into the AFC East.
a good prefix joke. That's what Mike is owning in on for 2024. That's what you got to look forward to. I've got a lot more lined up. Good. Okay, Stay you got tuned. <laughs> good. Let's get divisional. All right, we are on our third divisional breakdown episode. We're in the AFC right now. We're looking at the AFC East. It's a fun division to talk about. A lot of very relevant fantasy football players to discuss. And and as I've said on previous episodes, we're looking at uh, some of the offseason changes for each of these teams, players, rookies, coaches, schemes, uh, how things went last year, how we see things transpiring this year. And uh, ultimately, you know, we'll try to nail this division prediction-wise. But there are question marks. And we'll start with the team that has won four consecutive AFC East titles, the Buffalo Bills. And they still got it done last year. Um, Miami, same record. Buffalo ends up with the division title. They lost to the Chiefs. Uh, the struggle right now in Buffalo is like, is the clock, you know, is, is time running out for Buffalo on this championship window because the money that they're spending for Josh Allen is only going to continue to increase. His cap hit jumps from 30 to 60 next year. And and his cap hit has already hurt the team, their defense. They've lost some pieces there. For fantasy purposes, it's really, really interesting what's going to be necessary from this Buffalo Bills offense. They're going to need to put up even more points than ever, and they've got Josh Allen to do it. I didn't see anything that said he's going to slow down, but they lost so many weapons. They have the second most vacated targets in the league. I think there is a slight lack of confidence in the offense continuing to be the predictable provider of fantasy points that it has been in the past. Now, last year, their projected Vegas had them at 10.5 wins. They go 11 and 6. This year, it's at 10.5 again. Um, you know, they they had the offensive coordinator change. That was a, pro, a, a really key moment for this team where we saw Stephon Diggs fade into uh, irrelevance yeah. for an important part of your fantasy season. Um, and they stopped throwing the football. I mean, with Ken Dorsey for weeks one through 10, um, yards a game, they were seventh, but they threw the ball the 13th most, uh, eighth in points per game. Those numbers stuck. They were scoring a ton of points after the transition to Joe Brady, but the passing percentage dropped down to 31st in the league. It was the James Cook experience. Um, a lot of plays per game. They went six and one. They finished on a roll. And uh, so is this a new identity? Like how predictive is, you know, a seven game sample when, you know, this team, they made investments in the, in the draft, bringing in Keon Coleman, Curtis Samuel. Do we, do you see a balance or do you see them trying to run back what got them to six and one over the back half? I think you're going to see them try to run it back, especially when you look at what they did personnel wise. Um, you know, letting Stephon Diggs go. They they took Stephon Diggs from the focal point of this offense to a more ancillary, almost irrelevant piece of the offense during those last few games. They won those games, and then they said, "Hey, let's let's get more of this short area work." Uh, you know, Dalton Kincaid's going to step up. Curtis Samuel has worked with Joe Brady before. I think Curtis Samuel is the the number one target uh, in the wide receiver room here uh, in 2024, and so I think they're going to try to do more of the same, which to me just means like the way that I statted out the bills when I took a look at the changes, the splits last year, the personnel, I think this is going to be a running back and tight end team. I think they are going to have a lot of short passes, a lot of, um, you know, get the ball out quick. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm in love with both James Cook and Dalton Kincaid, and I'm not really into most of the other pieces. So let, let me bring something up then because we've talked about the transition that Patrick Mahomes has made in Kansas City with the offense over the last few years. His average depth of target has changed tremendously. You just lost Safon Diggs, who was a downfield threat, made big plays, 29% of targets. And then Gabe Davis, you know, yes, he can goose from here and there, but 15% of targets, caught a ton of, uh, of touchdowns and big plays. Both those guys are out, and it's hard to – like, if you tell me I'm subscribing to short area targets, like, that hasn't translated to number one finishes for Mahomes. No. You know, the offense has changed a lot. You don't have the over-the-top Tyree Kill stuff there, so you have more variation in outcome for the quarterback. It, is that what you are 
Well, the, is that uh, the extension, or do you just throw it out because Josh Allen can run the football? No, Josh Allen running is going to keep him up near the top. He still finished as my, uh, I guess, in six point passing, he was my number two um, quarterback. But in four point leagues, he's still my number one. And losing Gabe Davis, I've got to, I've got to give a shout out to this tweet. Ian Hart, it's is just such a fun fact. Here's receiving touchdowns since 2020, including playoffs. The the best of the best. Gabe Davis with 33, C.D. Lamb with 33, Jamar Chase 32, and Justin Jefferson 30. Say it again. <laughs> yeah. So Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and C.D. Lamb with 30, 32, and 33. They have fewer touchdowns than Gabe. And Davis? Gabe Davis with 33. <laughs> yes, yeah, but, but was, that's no, including oh, playoffs. So it basically all came okay, in that yeah. Kansas of City course, game. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> where just, he had he had 15 touchdowns in that game. Yeah, it's a wild wild stat. So no digs, no Davis. That is 284 vacated targets by the Bills. That is the most um, associated with any quarterback drafted in the top five since 2018. That is a ton of vacated targets, nearly 300. Are you afraid, Mike? Do you Are you afraid of the unknown here with the offensive changes? I My, my projections came out very unafraid, but, <laughs> but, but, like, but the more that the offseason season has been moving forward, like he, Josh Allen is mobile, so it's – it's not a fear of does he like full on Patrick Mahomes from last year where Mahomes ends up as the QB eight is incredibly disappointing uh, for fantasy football. I don't see that happening, but yet the stories of last year's Kansas city chiefs where they really didn't have like they didn't, there wasn't a, a wide receiver at least being drafted anywhere near the top of, of ADP. And that's where Buffalo is right now. Like, Keon Coleman, what the data I'm seeing is going as the wide receiver 45. So that's the first. And but on top of that, like it's it's up to Dalton Kincaid now. Of Mahomes has Kelsey, and, and despite the the disappointing feelings of Travis Kelsey from last year because of no, the end of the season, he's a number one. The season as a whole, Travis Kelsey was actually fantastic. So does is there a player on this team that can? fill the void that because because you still need while while the rushing will carry you to at least to have a really safe floor you need tremendous you, you still need passing to take yourself to being an elite like a top two guy well we know this from josh allen a rookie right you it was the yeah it was yes stefan diggs arrival that launched him into number one every year this is the first time ever that the qb1 in adp has his wide receivers drafted outside the top 40 there you go but I am curious. Now, I like Keon Coleman. I liked him in the draft process. The Bills liked him enough to make him a second-round pick. I'm curious if your sentiment around Josh Allen would be different if he, if they had taken Xavier Worthy or they had taken Ladd McConkey, players that you liked more in the pre-draft process. Yeah, if, if they had been able to get their hands on someone, you know, like Brian Thomas uh, Jr., yeah, even Brian Thomas. a first-rounder. They traded back a couple times. They could have taken Xavier Worthy. They – they said no. They traded back and got you know the consolation prize, and they say the nice things. And there's I great. I don't think press. that's what they called it, but <laughs> all right. They've got you know good press conferences. Uh, Keon Coleman, hey, delightful buddy. guy. You were our number three choice. How does I'm, that feel? I mean, if you trade back, <laughs> that's who you wanted. But go on. Um, you know the 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 words out of camp are not that great. They're saying he's coming along a little bit slower, or that not in those words. They say he's still got a lot to learn. He's you know, he, we don't know how many positions he's going to be able to pick up, yada, yada, yada. You're going to have a slow start, I think, to the rookie year for Keon Coleman. And my concern for Keon Coleman is, like, he, he projects to play, like, the X. And we I had a differing opinion of just Keon Coleman, the the prospect coming in, than Andy did. He wasn't really my favorite guy. He was too hot, too cold for me. And does he come in, and is he now, for this offense – is he a rookie version of Gabe Davis? He's still the better bet to me than the Curtis Samuel bet. Okay. That that would, and I know we'll disagree on that. That's fine. I I think the better bet if you have all your wide receivers going outside the top forty and you want to you want to bet on upside at that point in your draft, Curtis Samuel is going to be a pedestrian option for your for your fantasy roster. He just is. He's not going to. You're going to like Dalton Kincaid more than Curtis Samuel every week. They're in the same area of the field. You're gonna have to rely on on gadgetry and things for Curtis Samuel, and we we look. We've been here with Curtis Samuel before. Yeah, I mean Curtis Samuel will. I I, I agree with what you're saying, 
But Curtis Samuel will dominate his average draft position. He'll beat it, but he'll beat it to a point that's irrelevant. That's he does, I he, agree. He, does, he doesn't have the ceiling. So if you want to take a shot, I have no problem betting on you know the bigger body, more athletic, young guy with a bigger body bet. That, a bigger body bet. Okay. Um, you know that's that's what I would do personally. Like like I said earlier, my bet is on Dalton Kincaid and on James Cook. I believe those two guys are going to have phenomenal seasons. I like the James Cook bet. We we know that RB fourteen right now. That, so and look, in, a in, lot of picks behind Devon Achan that you mentioned earlier. Last year finished as the running back eleven, and he was a a huge part of the offensive philosophy shift when they made the offensive coordinator change. That's when things really kicked into gear for James Cook. He went from about 10 points a game to about 15, and his opportunities went up nearly five a game, and especially in the in the receiving game. And we know we've uh, we've had an article that that came out a few years ago of uh, the the Borgor the Borgogan looked the at what the Borgogan uh, we you know vacated targets we want so badly to just take receiver plug them into the vacated targets and say, look how many they're going to get. Doesn't work that but way. But in that in the study, we found that well actually, you know, yes, they they fill a void for targets, but the running backs often see an uptick in targets. So that I've I have come around. I like the I like the bet on James Cook and but Dalton Kincaid is it's it's tough because yes, the the natural progression of the player, first round pick, he's a tight end, it takes some time his season for a rookie tight end was actually fantastic. Was fantastic. It's just being sh overshadowed by Sam Laporta, but it's still hard to shake what happened as soon as his production really came when Doss, Dawson Knox was off the field. You were like, "Yeah, here we go, baby." Dalton Kincaid. We knew it all along. We've waited for it. Eight targets a game from week seven to ten, and then you know a couple weeks later. Those, got an offensive shift, and Dawson Knox comes back, and then the numbers go back down. Well, they, it shows you that because players, tight ends, it's a pro, it's a process to get yes. to the 80%, 90% of snaps. It's a natural process. But then with Knox going out, it just forced it for a while. You saw how the production would be with that kind of a, a workload, and then it went back. So I, I would imagine we'd all have come into this year saying the snaps are going up. I think he has just as much potential to be – in the Trey McBride conversation, as McBride does, I mean, I, it's a huge opportunity. Yeah, Josh Allen's a better quarterback than Kyler Murray, and you know, Trey McBride can't be the number one target for Kyler. He just can't. Marvin Harrison's going to be the number one target. Dalton right now, K you're saying Kincaid's the guy. I'm saying Dalton Kincaid he can't be, yeah. should or could be the number one target for Josh Allen and the Bills. So I, I'm completely in on him, and he doesn't cost as much as trying to chase Laporta's double digit rookie touchdowns. And then going back to James Cook, this is the running back 11 last season who's being drafted as the running back 14, has way more opportunity. They relied on him more when this coordinator shift happened, and he only had two touchdowns last there's year. no competition. He had two touchdowns. So you, it's like you that's don't have – That's the problem with him. That's the problem with him, absolutely. But he's there's no way he plays 17 and doesn't get at least two, right? Yeah. <laughs> He had the yeah. You're saying that's the floor of the touchdown world, and he still finished where he finished. Yeah, so he was only behind McCaffrey and Brees Hall in yards from scrimmage. Yeah, he's, he's a good back. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> he's a little back. He is, but he's he's great, and uh, I think we want to see it re-rolled. Uh, Arizona, Miami, Jacksonville, Baltimore to start the year. Oh, by the way, Keon Coleman Did one pick ahead of Lad McConkey, Mister Consolation Prize. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Teams make bad picks all the time. Okay, yeah, all right. But hold on, hold on. Arizona, Miami, Jacksonville. That that's the first three weeks. Not too shabby. That's in Miami. Yeah, the but Miami defense should be okay. They should be, but you're. I feel like you're forced. I'd be taking Miami in that game. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about an offense that oh, will yeah. put up points oh, against yeah. the Bills and make. Oh, you're liking you're liking the beginning yes. for this team. For, I'm liking for for fantasy. That's I'll take that. Miami was 11-6 and six as well. We'll move on and talk about them. Uh, they had a projected win total of 9.5 last year. They're at 9.5 this year. So far, we're re-rolling. <laughs> Vegas is re-rolling this division. Um, they played just six games last year against teams with a winning record. How'd they do? They were 1-5. and five. <laughs> And that became a storyline that yes. we were watching for yeah. fantasy. Um. Their only one was that win in Week 16 against Dallas. 
It's not great, Bob. I feel like we are are doing the um, the same routine with Miami every year right now because we've had two exceptionally prolific starts of the year, especially for Tua where he looked like a great fantasy pick and then things slow down at times for Miami. But, you know, where are you with them? Number one in points per game. You know the offense is going to work with McDaniels. Um, they added Odell Beckham. They didn't lose anybody of significance over the offseason. You're re-rolling it. You get Waddle back healthier than he was last year. I I will be honest. I, my job is in football, and I frequently forget that Odell Beckham signed to the Miami Dolphins. I knew he signed, and I still dropped him in Dynasty. I think this time next year we will say, do you guys remember Odell was on the Dolphins <laughs> last year? That's how it feels. But but the big pieces, like some offenses with predictability, you love it when it's like Miami. Yeah. Yes. You know, where you have, you know, Tyreek and Waddle. You're done. You're done talking about receiving options, right? Yes, you are. I will I, I think Malik Washington's name just needs to be thrown out there. He was a lower drafted wide receiver, rookie coming in, but they they've got two of those guys um this year in in the draft they drafted Jalen Wright a speedster that fits this system running back running back um a little bit later in the draft he was a day three pick and Malik Washington those are two sometimes pieces fit a team very well like A-Chan last year and I think those two guys do fit the mold so it's just worth noting keeping your eye on maybe no, if I'm, you're in a deeper league a last pick or something like that I am in agreement like Malik Washington had one of my my prospect scores that I look look at that was like elite, like top of the charts. I mean, he he fell in draft, so it's like, well, okay, we got to pay attention to that. But Puka had a very similar score in this metric, and then fell in draft. And I'm not saying he's Puka Nakua, but I'm saying he is. He's not a player that is going to do anything if both of these guys are healthy. But should Tyreek or Jalen Waddle miss time? That's going to be a fascinating watch. And not not every draft pick is the same. Like, you watch the draft reactions. This one was Mike McDaniel on the phone. The GM talking about how Mike McDaniel's been trying to get him to draft him for a couple rounds now, and uh, McDaniel was pumped for this pick. All the Odell fans upset about what you're saying right here uh, and Odell's opportunity fun. to be the next Chase Claypool of the Miami Dolphins. I think all the Odell fans are in New York, though, and they're fine with him not being good for the Dolphins. Where are, you, where are you with Tua when it comes to making decisions for late-round draft picks at the quarterback position? I mean, Jason, you're making a face that says... I don't want him. You you don't want a, a piece I, of I, the I, Tua experience. I mean, in best ball, I think he's a much better option simply because the variance, he was not very consistent. This running game is out of control sometimes, and so <laughs> you can have... That's a funny way to put it, but it's true. Yeah, you can... I mean... Put it this way: Who led the? Uh, am I correct that he led the NFL in passing yards last year? I believe Tua did. Uh, Four thousand six hundred twenty-four yards, five hundred sixty attempts. See if, see if that was number one. I believe he led the NFL in passing. You can't do better than that. His consistency score. He led the. Yes, he yeah. led the NFL. You you want to know who's number two? I do. Jared Goff. Yeah, baby, those Lions were awesome. <laughs> But my point is, you can't ask much more from him, and he had a consistency score of an F. Uh, having 23% of his games last year, he exceeded 20 points. That's just... Uh, this like, is a second straight year where if you drafted two and you played him for the first half of the year and then you traded him into Mike, it would have been a good decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which sucks. is exactly what I... I mean, Mike, you traded for two oh. from me because he was an MVP candidate and he was dominating for the first... Six weeks yeah. of the season. Really needed a quarterback, and then it tanks my season. So. Yeah, you were not happy. <laughs> you you acted like I did it on purpose, like I told you to stop. You did. You were straight you were mad like, at you Andy. Were mad. This You're was telling Andy's me you wouldn't have been mad? Of course I would have been. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I tra it was to his fault. It, it, that's, I called that's him up fair. and I said, yo, slow it down. And, and that, Andy got Dak? Off of the waiver wire, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. All right, I would have been mad. So, But... Uh, but uh, uh, so tip for Tua, he's going right now as the QB 13 on sleeper. Actually, one pick ahead of Jared Goff, so that's funny. But, like, Brock Purdy is ahead of, of Tua. So for a guy that can lead the league in passing yardage, to only have the the 29 touchdowns on the 4,600 yards, I think that that's 
low. I think that, that there's a little bit margin for that to go up uh, by a couple. And I think that Jalen Waddle is a huge part of this. Like Jalen Waddle's struggles, it's hard to really encapsulate them on a box score where the guy was just, he was hurt all the time, uh, you know, on and off the field. So playing and struggling through it wasn't that wasn't anywhere close to the same player that we had uh, seen before that. So I like I'm betting on Jalen Waddle to re- look, assuming health, of course, return to form, and then it being not we have a you have the elite Tyree Kill on one side, and then you have a really good Jalen Waddle. It's, no, you have an elite Tyree Kill, and then you have an up and coming elite wide receiver in Jalen Waddle who was just paid to be that as well. So I think that there is there's a world where Tua hits the 4,600 yards and he's at the 33 passing touchdowns, which is – I don't want to keep dumping on the C.J. Stroud draft pick, but it's like Tua like – if you're telling me at the end of the year Tua has more yards and touchdowns than C.J. Stroud, to go – That's not a leap. You're like, you're like yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's, that's not weird. And yet Tua is being drafted as the quarterback 13 – and and Stroud is being drafted as like the quarterback five. In last year, they had the fourth most games lost on the offensive line, which had a higher rated unit. Um, they lost their starting guard this offseason. Keeping Tua upright has been a huge priority, but he has the weapons. Like Waddle, even in the games he played, played a smaller snap count than the year before. So he missed games, was injured, and then played a lower snap count because he was probably still injured yes, in those games. And exactly, yeah. So I know you love Waddle from a value perspective this yep. year. Are you on board with the bounce back, Jay? For, for Waddle, Waddle, yeah, I, I do think Waddle has a bounce back. And and to ha- you know, you joked around earlier about how two years in a row, if you had drafted Waddle, uh, drafted Tua and traded him, I mean, it was awesome because he did start the season. Huh? Yeah, they have like new plays at the beginning of the year that nobody knows, and then they get figured out, I guess. But uh, Miami's opening schedule is even better. Than Buffalo's, you got home against Jacksonville, home against Buffalo, who's lost so many defensive pieces. Seattle, and then home against Tennessee. <laughs> against Tennessee, yeehaw! <laughs> I'll let me pop this tooth out real quick and give you that team name. So um, you know, it may, maybe you draft him and trade him a month in because it's not going to be consistent because of the running game. That's the one. That's speaking the only of thing. which, we already talked about Devon A. Chan. Yeah. He's good. Draft him. Late. He's going, Let him fall. <laughs> he's going as the RB8, Raheem Mostert, the RB25. So the world is saying we expect the baton to be passed. This isn't back-to-back. This isn't you know, a committee situation where they're, the expectation is Mostert can repeat a uh, this outlandish season touchdown-wise, which really – you needed that, right? That's how he was vaulted to that level was 20-plus touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, there were games where he didn't have as many attempts, 11 attempts, 9 attempts, 10 attempts, but getting into the end zone, having all those opportunities inside the five-yard line, it was kind of unbelievable, and yet they brought all the same people back, and you imagine that, you know, when you listen to Mike McDaniel's talk, it's, well, this is the leader of our running back room. Yes, and you should listen to those things, like, that's why I, that's what makes the bet on HN so scary is like it will be a timeshare. Mostert is going to play even even if it the, always has been for him. Like yeah, the baton it can be passed. That's fine. And it's Devon HN is the leader, but he will be the leader of a timeshare with Mostert and then it, are you that confident that when they get when it's they're inside the 2 or inside the 5 are you that confident it will be HN getting the majority of those? No, that's where it be where HN becomes a scary proposition. I, I For, and most are, you're like, well, this is they hand the baton back and forth when they run off the field. That's kind of how this offense works. Yeah, I, it's it's weird, and this is pretty much the only offense I think in the NFL where I'm fine with both running backs. I think both are going to have great seasons. Um, you saw this. I think the best comp for this is back in the day with Jamal Charles. Um, and who Thomas was, Jones and Thomas Jones, where Thomas Jones, wow. Thomas Jones was getting a ton of touchdowns. Jamal Charles had a ton of touchdowns. He did, he wasn't used inside the five. It was like he just ripped off long ones. He he had seven receiving touchdowns, and you know that's what happened. And that was the year when Jamal Charles was the number one running back in the in the NFL. That's the type of ceiling for Devon Achan is twelve 
long rushing touchdowns, seven receiving touchdowns, and all of a sudden he's the number one running back. All right, we will take another quick break and talk about a team that was, um, well, they were, they didn't even get to start doing what they <laughs> wanted to do last year. Oh. All right, as we continue through the AFC East, we reach the New York Jets. Oh, boy. With the grittiest 7-10 and 10 season you've ever had. We all sat, we all sat down Monday Night Football. They won seven games. Yes, with bated breath. Yes. And we said it begins. The Aaron Rodgers era in New York. Here we go. Runs out with the American flag. I mean, the, the, the He was ready to go. Are excited, and uh, this is the future. Maybe that flag was too heavy. You know what I mean? Oh, it was like a pregame tweak, right? And then it just wasn't prepped because he's not usually doing that. That's a good point. Like he strained one leg let's a little just, bit too much. Let's just Aaron jog out. Can this we look? Year. Just jog, just a casual jog out. Kyle, find out what hand he had the the flag in. And was you. that the Achilles that he tore? Yeah, it's important. <laughs> Go on. They they were projected for nine and a half wins. If he runs, dude. If week one he comes out. Running again with the flag. Trade him mid game. <laughs> just, just get, just unload. This was, I it's look. This too, was heartbreaking. It's too heavy. <laughs> you two it's are very the entertaining. Drag. It's the drag. <laughs> it's, it's not aerodynamic. If you're an flag. aged quarterback, let someone else hold the flag. Is yeah. what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Oh. They they also have the same projected win total as they did last year. That's crazy. Which is nine and a half. They have an easy strength of schedule. This is supposed to be the redemption year for Aaron Rodgers. We know what the defense is like. We know what Brees Hall is like. I mean, doesn't it all come down to whether Aaron Rodgers is healthy and capable as the quarterback of this football team for how this season goes? Because if he's if he's an above average quarterback, let me just put him at like the Kirk Cousins level quarterback. Oh, oh, brother! Then this team is going to win a ton of football games, right? Yes. They have they have an incredible. Wide receiver who we haven't seen the full uh, the full you know potential of in Garrett Wilson because he hasn't had somebody to give him the football. But this is so make or break, and it feels like you are every bet you make on an offensive player when you draft them in fantasy for the Jets. Is it better on Aaron Rodgers? It doesn't feel like you can e e escape that reality. Yeah, there's there's at least a break glass in case of emergency with Tyrod Taylor, which is a significant backup upgrade this year, but. You're He's still, always hurt too. I mean, every time he takes over as yeah. a backup, he gets hurt, and you get the third string. Yeah, uh, who who is this? Uh, who's third string? We're oh, gonna need that know. information. It's a rookie, I believe. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, Garrett Wilson would be worse with Tyrod Taylor. But the, honestly, this is what is scary to me about drafting Garrett Wilson, who is almost my, you know, who scares me to draft pick. Okay. Uh, um, just because. I'm not as confident that Aaron Rodgers at age 40 off an Achilles tear will be great. Now, can he manage the game and get wins? Absolutely. I think he's going to be very good for the Jets if he's, you know, healthy. How many passing touchdowns did they have last year? I deleted it out of our show, Doc, so you can't cheat. But do you know the answer to this? Man, I'm going to guess 13. Mike? You want to take a shot? That's so low. I'm and I'm high. I'm sure. I think uh, I'm gonna go. Let's go eleven. It's eleven. Oh, it's eleven passing touchdowns. That's how is that possible? It feels it feels almost impossible. And seven of the eleven were inside the ten, which means there were four passing touchdowns that were outside the ten yard line for a football Gross. team that plays seventeen weeks, twenty ninth in points per game. But it, it sets up pretty nicely this year, schedule-wise. Um, Brees Hall, another year removed from the injury. Yeah, I mean, We're all in love with the Brees Hall potential for the season. I've got him ranked uh, extremely high. Yeah, you got to love that coming into the season, at least entering the season, uh, the Jets have their offensive line is currently ranked fifth by PFF. We love that. They've made some big-time additions. The sign two tackles, right? I think the, the like my question for Brees Hall is how like what will the amount of the receiving game truly be? Because ninety five targets is that's not happening. If it did, then Brees Hall is is far and away the number one 
fantasy football running back at the end of the year. But it was like the numbers got so juiced up by the end of the year where the, the Jets could do nothing offensively except be just be Check it down. just be terrified and throw it to Brees and and beg him to do something for the team. So where do you guys think the the receiving work? What's that line going to be at? Yeah, that, that's a big deal. That's that's why I have him behind Bijan in my order because you know it's it's usually okay. Christian McCaffrey's one. Then you got Bijan and Brees. Who do you want? And you can make a strong argument for either of them. Uh, he didn't play fifty percent of the snaps for the first month. After that point forward, he's actually on pace for a hundred and eleven targets uh, in in the games that he was actually like fully active of. But you're right. What was happening was that offensive line was so bad and the quarterback play was so bad, they would literally just snap the ball, let him through, and dump it over the line to him. It was their only thing they could do on offense, and and sometimes it worked. This uh, is a bet on better efficiency by the offense to get altogether. It's more a touchdown bet on, opportunities. Yeah, it's a bet on Brees Hall being – I mean, he had weeks last year where we were like, what in the world is going on? Yeah. It's like two yards of carry. Everybody knew what was happening on every play. Like, if the offense gets more efficient, he should be more efficient. Uh, uh, you know, he doesn't have to be everything on every play for them if they have a quarterback that's competent, but he's going to have every opportunity to be a top five running back. I do have some numbers for you, just so that I could throw these out here for Aaron Rodgers. The last 300-yard game by Aaron Rodgers was December 21st, 2021. I'm okay, I'm okay with the Rodgers was never not a big good his last year in Green Bay. It, that's... That wasn't his last – was that his last – no, it wasn't his last year in Green Bay. I know. But I'm saying <laughs> Rodgers – like the Rodgers experience for fantasy is not yards. The last time that he was the quarterback one on any week was October 20th, 2019, <laughs> which was 1,726 days ago. To be fair, that is an exceptionally high bar, but yeah, yes. I don't need him to be the QB one. Last three touchdown game was November of 2022. So, okay. I mean, I'm just saying it's – it's That's not that bad. So, Mike, you felt like those stats said, yeah, baby. Well, no, well, the, the yardage, honestly, he, like, he's just – he's an efficiency monster when it comes to throwing touchdowns. That's how he plays I the wanna, game. But 11 uh, of November of 22, you deleted the 23 season. So, I don't know, just yeah, I actually it. don't feel like that's that bad either. That's not the um, worst. Nice stat, Kyle. Uh, Al Borland, I, I am curious. You were a lifelong Packer fan. You loved Aaron Rodgers. You saw the injury last year. What is the mental state right now? With are, are you rooting for him? Have you have you you know? Do you have loyalty that extends beyond the the jersey? No. <laughs> so you're. I've got as much loyalty as he does. Oh, oh <laughs> get bodied. Oh, okay, man. Al, with strong words. Yeah, I've, I've Jordan like, Love season has begun. I feel like Packers. Which time will pass, the wounds will heal, and he will be welcomed back. But right now, I feel like Packers fans are like, who's Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, yeah, and that I would be saying that right now if uh, I were the Owl. How do you feel about Brett Favre? I love him. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> exactly. it'll, it'll, it'll he'll come back to yeah, you. It will. Uh, Garrett Wilson, you talked about him. We talked about Brees Hall. I just the the thing for Garrett Wilson is so it's similar to Drake London. It's it's a scary pick. He's the wide receiver eight which is still somehow a first-round pick because it's so wide receiver heavy. But he is a an electric player that if he gets average to above average quarterback play, he will return on that. But it, it feels fragile right now, relying on Rodgers and Tyrod. Mike Williams, uh, <laughs> do, do we care? Is <laughs> it, it's, is it? Hold on. That it's, was Mike Williams with a question mark at the end of his name. Well, I also – it's, uh, you know – a couple of weeks into July here, I think this is the first time Mike Williams' name has made it onto the podcast in this year. Other than maybe like he's working off to the side in some yeah camp. I mean, he's 29 years old. We're it just, gives him. A, I mean, they, they didn't have great options on the outside. They have a true X if Mike Williams is healthy. That's a big if. Yeah, as an outside wide receiver, older, coming off of an ACL. You usually want to bet against that for fantasy. Now, what if, was the contract? Was it a one year? Yeah, ten, one year, ten million dollars. Yeah, so that I, reminds me of when Beckham was tossed onto the Baltimore Ravens last year. Man, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think Mike Williams is going to be an impact player for fantasy or for the Jets. Garrett so, Wilson will, Tyler Conklin will be involved. That's at, what I was going to ask you: is like if if Rodgers is decent, you give me another name outside of Garrett Wilson in the receiving game. Maybe Brees Hall will have 90 targets, Mike. Maybe. I mean, because if, if we don't 
love Mike Williams. I mean, he's probably not going to be high volume no matter what. What do they have? Uh, Xavier Gibson. Yep. And they and uh, like, well, they drafted Malachi, Malachi Corley. Corley. Yeah. But I I I really think they're going to use him as a as a gadget screen guy. The new carries, kickoff rules. Kickoff returns. Yep. They have to go on the road and play San Francisco in Week One. That's a bummer. But then they get Tennessee, New England, Denver, and Minnesota. That's, so that's and then we we said fourth easiest schedule. Um, it's it's in it going to be a very exciting year. Let us please let us just watch it. Let us yeah, watch Aaron Rodgers on the field. Healthy. It's better to have the storyline with him there. Like that's what I felt when he went down. Was like this was going to be something fun every week to be entertained by good or bad. All the primetime games, you know what I mean? Oh. For, for, for just cause, and they were all ruined. That's not that's not fair to the people. We do have another team that plays in this division. They owned this division for, what, two decades? Yeah, it stopped in 2020. New England was 4-13 and 13 last year. The Belichick era is over. They were 29th in points per game. Um, they had 13 total pass plays inside the 10, which was the fewest of any team since 2018. That stat is no, that's imp- insane. No way. I read it, and I was like, I shouldn't read this out loud we because need, we need there's to no way that's right. Check that stat. That's insane. Their projected win total last year was seven and a half. This year, do you know where it is? I do. Uh, I'm guessing four and a half. Four and a half wins out of 17 weeks. They also have the second hardest strength to schedule. That doesn't seem fair. Uh, they also have Jacoby Brissett and maybe eventually Drake May at quarterback. Didn't score a lot of points last year. Probably going to score more this year. Possibly going to score more this year. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a very nice The division is just brutal. This is like being tossed into the, you know, AFC North, which we just went over, that has four competitive teams, and then just not being at that stage of your development where you can do it. Yeah, Um, you've you've got a bad setup for offense. Rookie quarterbacks aren't usually great for fantasy. Rookie quarterbacks are almost always bad for the receiving options. Eventually, Drake May will take the field. This is a team that's projected to win four and a half games. Jacoby Brissett is not coming in here and going to have them seven and one through eight weeks and hold off the rookie. So that means the majority of the season will be Drake May. He is set up a little bit for failure with his wide receiver room. A lot of names you know, but not a lot of names you want. I mean, unless some of these rookies – uh, if Jalen Polk has a great season, a breakout, you know, looks more like an Anquan Bolden, okay, there's hope there. There's there's avenues where you could talk yourself into it. But the majority of these wide receivers, they're all wide receiver threes in the NFL. I don't even think they have a wide receiver two. I think Jalen Polk can become that. But as a rookie, he's more of like what should be a, a, an NFL team's wide receiver three. Fantasy value on the roster will be the – the difficult situation for fantasy managers in the draft. You you always bring a a C, a four and thirteen season into the next season's draft. It always happens. It's why Houston players were in you know way down the ADP board last year. It's going to happen in New England. You've got Ramondre Stevenson who just got paid, and and we're he, in there. I yeah. I mean that's that's the only to what piece, degree he's a tw- it's RB twenty two right now. Yeah, I, I'll bet he beats that. I think he, but it not he's not going to smoke that. You know, this is like running back eighteen. So it's like okay, if you if you need a running back two, and you're in the sixth, maybe even seventh round, uh, you know he'll he'll fall there. Then it, that's a that's a fine pick. Is that it? Is there a world where that's it? There is definitely a world where that's it. I would say the 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 probable world is that's it. There are cases you can make for Antonio Gibson or Hunter Henry or or you know Demario Douglas. Maybe he. Steps up, but uh, the the probably it's so that's it. Ramondre Stevenson check out. I think I've gone through the full cycle of, of trying to be optimistic about this roster, and then realizing that it's probably not going to happen. And then when you look at the opening schedule, you're going to beat Cincinnati and Cincinnati in Week One. No, you're going to beat Seattle. I mean, that's at home. Maybe maybe you're going to go to New York, and then you're going to go to San Francisco. Woo. Brothers. So one and three is probably your Sounds- best case scenario to start the uh, Gerard Mayo-, Mayo era. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, it looks to me like Drake May will be starting Week Five. Do you think that the Jets, Dolphins, and Bills fans, how many years of this do they need to feel better? To feel about like- what they went through. 
at least a decade. You've got to go through a full ten years. Yeah, you got to you got to have ten years to where you just don't really remember anymore. Okay. Um. Yeah, the projected win total four and a half. In a tough schedule, so um, I, I think they're the, underdogs in every game this year based on Vegas lines. I think the most interesting thing about this team, like if I'm like, what are the what are the cool storylines? Well, like what is interesting? What am I fascinated to find out? I am just fascinated to find out which wide receivers make the roster. It's just there's so sure. many. There are so many wide receivers here, and they can't all make the roster. Well, and it's like I see Jalen Polk and Demario Douglas and Kendrick Bourne and Javon Baker, and then they got KJ Osborne. And Don't forget about Juju. Juju's there, and then uh, Thornton. Oh, yeah, second-round pick. Yeah, yeah he, he may not. <laughs> no, I mean, most of these guys won't be there, but it's like, it's just uh, – You want to you wanna try to predict this division? I do. This one is tough. Oh, it's soups easy for me. Okay, it's you not want, tough. Go <laughs> ahead. You want me to go first? Yeah. Dolphins win the division. I think they've got the best roster on both sides of the, uh, the field. Um, Bills are going to be second. The Jets – Great defense. I don't believe in the offensive weapons. Patriots last. I have the Jets winning the division. Woo! Okay. And when you when you look at the spicy. when you look at it's not that spicy. They, they are, won seven games. They are dude. the second highest odds to win the division. They have higher odds to win the division than Miami does. Ooh, I need to go to um, Miami. So Buff, you know, then I have <laughs> Buffalo. Or I'm sorry, I got the Jets, then Miami, then Buffalo, then New England. So wow. I just made the bet. I just sent Josh Allen out in Dynasty. And so I'm going to follow that through with how I see the, the, you know, it was one thing to switch the offense like they did over the back half of the year and have some success. It's another thing running it from the top without the stability of Stephon Diggs. Like, I know he wasn't involved that much. He's still running routes. He's still part of the defensive. Yeah, that's true. Like, I don't think he's going to – Keon Coleman's not getting the same kind of coverage that Stephon Diggs is getting. Uh, they're going to bring some, you know, linebackers up. They're going to be able to watch that running game. Uh the hardest Look, part for me was Bills versus Jets. Like I, f I feel like the it, it, the, the way top, that I, the way the that top. I look at it is like okay, the Patriots are last. I think the Dolphins will win. Got it. I I just couldn't go back and forth. But when I thought about so the seven wins for the Jets, four of them were against Tommy DeVito, Sam Howell, Bailey Zappi, and Russell Wilson. So it was like okay, you can win those. They can win them again. They can. They got a great defense. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, where are you going? I mean, they also beat Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts and oh, CJ Stroud. Oh man, <laughs> selective, <laughs> selective. It, it was very selective because <laughs> yeah. it was right yeah, after Mike. the shutout. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I think the Bills will stay at the top. Then I'll take the Jets, Dolphins, Patriots. Sorry, that Patriots, is man. uh three very different. Uh, well, not the Patriots. The Patriots <laughs> yeah. are right where, uh, Look, it, right it, where they're gonna finish. It for the Patriots. It's it's just. Is Drake May the guy? Like if, if Drake May is the guy, then they will figure it out really quick. I I definitely think it will be a, a very fun division to watch. I think Drake May is the storyline that I'm most excited to see he is. in New England. Yeah. Um but you know, we've been surprised. We've been surprised quite a bit with the uh turnover in the division. It's just injuries are a big part of it. I mean, the Jets story last year is different on one injury, right? And um there's a lot of questions to be answered. Yeah, and, and obviously when these teams go from worst to first, it is oftentimes the biggest deal is the quarterback. I think none of us would have ever projected last year that the Houston Texans finished first in the division and are awesome because we didn't think rookie C.J. Stroud would come in and be that good. And so Drake May's got a lot of talent. If Drake May comes in and is Justin Herbert, you know, then then the Patriots five wins, aren't six look wins. Back. The Patriots have a uh, have a very good defense. I think Gerard Mayo is going to do great things there. I think it's just a very tough division to come in and do it in year one. All right, on Tuesday we have the AFC West, so we'll wrap up the AFC divisional breakdowns. Thursday we'll take a break between the uh, the two conferences, and we'll mock draft Jason Makalaka Ding Dong. Oh, Makalaka Ding Dong. And then uh, we'll jump into the NFC after that. So. You want to follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers? Follow Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway, and you can always watch the show over on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballer. Subscribe, click the bell over there. That'll do it for us today. But there'll be another show, I promise, very very soon. Goodbye, everybody. See ya. Thank you 
for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.